Hi, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Liberate the Nations. My name is Eleonora, and today we're going to be talking about the partial solar eclipse that's happening in Taurus on Saturday, April 30th, with its peak time of 1.28 p.m. That's for Pacific Standard Time. Always start by prefacing, do not manifest on eclipses. The sun and the moon are not working properly like they would do on a regular lunation. So obviously solar eclipses happen during new moons. So I feel like this is a really good time to sit, learn, meditate, reflect on what's popping up in your life and what messages are coming through. Um, obviously, if you have access to and can, I would highly recommend identifying where Taurus lands in your chart so you can kind of tune in and see what messages and what areas of life are being affected right now. But without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, so for starters, I do want to mention that the last time we had eclipses in the Taurus Scorpio axis was 2013-2014. The nodes were reversed, so we had the south node in Taurus and the north node in Scorpio. Right now, it's the other way around. But just think back to these times as well and see what kind of eclipse story you are building along the way. First aspect that we're going to talk about is Venus and Jupiter conjunct in Pisces. Worth mentioning that Mars is co-present, not quite conjunct, but it is there with these two benefics. So, I mean, these are two benefics, Venus and Jupiter joining in the free-flowing intuitive sign of Pisces, um, which happens to be Jupiter's home and Venus exaltation sign. So in general, this conjunction does indicate good fortune, especially when we're talking about connecting with other people, relationships, money, values. Um, but also, again, Mars is co-present here. So it kind of adds a little bit more fuel to the fire. And I feel like the energy would be more passionate and determined as well. Next aspect is Mars in Pisces is going to be sextile, both the sun and the moon um, in Taurus. So this aspect probably will boost our energy a little bit, both emotionally and our confidence, our vitality. I think this eclipse all in all can be very eye-opening for most of us if we really tune into the energy right now and the messages that are meant for us during this time. Also, there is a lot of planets in Pisces. So it could be somewhat of an emotionally volatile lunation. So my advice is to do what is best for you, spend time decompressing, journaling, meditating, um, walking around, indulging in activities and in relationships with people that are going to fulfill and kind of um, replenish your energy and not drain it. And I think because Neptune is heavily involved in the last degrees of Pisces right now, there's a lot of like illusion and things kind of being not really what they seem. So I would take this time to use discernment and to practice really listening to your intuition and learning the difference between what is an illusion and what your actual true feelings are. Also, last but not least, this is not an aspect. It's just a worthy mention, honorable mention that our friend Mercury has just entered one of its home signs of Gemini. So I think this can offer us a little bit more clarity and flow, not only in our communication with ourselves and with other people, but also our thought patterns. All right, you guys know what time it is. I'm going to pull a card for just a collective, anybody watching this video. And it'll be just a card of an energy that we can really rely on on or a message that needs to come through for us for this uh, partial solar eclipse and Taurus happening on April 30th. We got the first quarter moon, which we know is the first quarter after the new moon. It's kind of like a check-in point of where your intentions are right now, where your manifestations are. Are you watering them? Are you tending to them? Are you being really attentive? A lot of people think that manifesting is just literally doing a ritual day of or day after a new or full moon and then just that is it. But a lot of manifesting is daily practice as well. You need to feed into those energies that you've just laid out. You need to, when you plant a plant, a seed, you don't just plant the seed, water it once and be like, 
good luck. You have to be maintaining that. You have to water it every day. You have to make sure the soil is fine. It's interacting with the sun correctly, like the temperature, everything. So I think this calls to just really check in with ourselves and at what point of our manifestation practice, obviously we can't manifest right now, but um, you can look back to that full moon that we just had um, in Scorpio and see what what your manifestations are looking like, what you were planning on releasing or bringing back or whatever it is, like check in with yourself and check in with your, I think it's an overall of like checking in with your goals and checking in where you are in life versus where you want to be or what intentions and goals you set for yourself. And not really from the point of like, oh, you're not doing shit, but from the point of like, let's let's do a realistic check-in and see what we need to adjust and what we need to kind of revisit to be better for ourselves, to not stress ourselves, to not put too much pressure on ourselves. Just be nice and gentle. For crystals to recommend, I will recommend Celestite because this not only will help you connect with your guides and angels and just your spiritual team overall, but it'll help you relax, it'll help you de-stress, and it kind of gives you a sense of safety and nurturing as well. For events to recommend, make sure you check out the description box down below. We have amazing events for this partial solar eclipse. All right, you guys, that is it for this partial solar eclipse in Taurus. I hope everybody's doing good. Um, it's it's about to be kind of an intense month ahead, um, but all will be well. Just um, make sure you're checking in with yourself. You're checking in with your body, with your emotions, um, with the people around you. I'm sending everybody much, much love, many, many blessings, and have a very happy solar eclipse. Energy healing is a form of therapy that helps uh, treat the person on all levels of their life, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, etherically, which is energetically and physically. I'm energy, this chair is energy. Everything around us is energy. Uh, when we you receive an energy healing session, it's a transmission of life force. There are a lot of techniques that we can use to balance the energy field. Uh, regardless of the practitioner, there are certain ways in which each of us can connect to and help the client um, rebalance whatever it is that's going on in their energy field that is creating dis-ease or discomfort in their lives. We work with you both in person and remote. Energy healing is good for everything. So you can use it to manifest something. You can use it to uh, treat a, an ailment, whether it's something physical, mental, emotional. And we cleanse your chakras, balance you, clear out stress, physical issues, worry, fear, trauma, anxiety. Release cords, release things in your life or in your body temple that are keeping you from moving forward. I normally suggest that people get energy healing whenever they feel that they need it. A healing energy work should be done on a regular basis, like taking a shower. If you're watching this and it crosses your mind, hmm, out of curiosity, get a healing. You're being called to it, 